Hello and everyone. Hello everyone and now welcome to game number two to the, in the series between Fly and Yumiko. Let's go ahead and speed things up. I think I'm just going to go with a six times speed as the game did really open up extremely fast and I felt like I was just trying to catch my breath for far too long. Yumiko spawning as the red human player on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, we see Fly spawning as the purple orc on the bottom left. This is a human versus orc matchup as we're already looking at the archmage clearing out the necessary skeletal marksman burning archer creep camp because of the bonus units. Yumiko now grabbing a skeletal marksman and a burning archer and now looking to actually pull away. It could try to drop another water elemental here as this peasant is now attempting to run back. Now Yumiko does have a bit of a head start as the Blade Master has not gotten any kills whatsoever and this poor peon may end up getting taken down well before he um, tries to make the escape. Alright, there it goes. There goes that peon there as the Blade Master looking to perhaps clear out and take down the Burning Archer and Skeletal Marksman. Alright, a bit of damage already on Yumiko's Skeletal Marksman. That is not going to be a good spot to be in and I'm not quite sure why the Burning Archer actually has the side silence on him. The Burning Archer currently silenced, unable to deal any real damage as the Fly already getting a very, very early kill on the early Skeletal Marksman. That means no cold arrows as the Blade Master is just running around trying to chase after the unit here. All right, let's take a look. Blade Master may end up getting that Windwalk Strike. There it goes, takes down another key unit, but the Grunt gonna end up falling instead. Archmage, oh my goodness, the Archmage almost takes down the Blade Master. Blade Master goes down the nine hit points as he is able to escape. Now, all of that damage is going to be erased by a single charge of a healing salve, pretty much, as the Blade Master going to recoup and then push back through. However, the big deal is going to be the fact that the Blade Master does not have that much mana. Without a fair amount of mana, it is not going to be able to do um, nearly as much as it wants to as, oh, level 2 now on that Archmage. Blade Master unable to get the shot off there, but the Blade Master is waiting to take down this Dire Wolf. All right, oh, there's the kill there, and now the Blade Master is revealed. Currently sitting at level 1, not quite at level 2, and it doesn't look like it will have enough mana to do so. Water Elemental is now currently trying to fight back here. Item is a pure up of Vitality, the perfect item at this point in the time, because that Archmage doesn't want to fall. There goes a Grunt, though, as the Blade Master now hits level... Excuse me, a Footman, as the Blade Master hits level 2, and now a second Grunt will be falling for Fly. Fly losing two grunts this early in the game is really going to set him behind pe just because of the amount of units. Those grunts are very expensive. It would be similar to a human player losing three footmen and that Blade Master is still rather low on experience. All right, going after a footman there, I take it back. The Blade Master is not low on experience, has a fair bit of experience, but is low on mana. He has to play this extremely carefully. He does have boots of speed. And he is really abusing the charges on that healing salve. By constantly, constantly healing and not having to head back home, the Archmage is not going to head out and do any free creeping as he needs to protect this expansion since he invested so much of the early game into the strategy. A lot of peasants are in position here. You can see the Arcane Tower is about done as the Blade Master now going after the Skeletal Marksman on his side of the map. All right, the Skeletal Marksman here and the Burning Archer will both be taken down, giving additional units for Fly. And now Fly is going to get to perhaps level 3 extremely quickly. Meanwhile, the Archmage is trying to push through. And the big question is going to be, how is Yumiko looking to even things up and use the extra gold that he has? Yumiko currently running around with this Archmage, that pure up of Vitality, and he's not really doing that much good. Yes, he could go after the mercenary camp here, but I do not think that there is any healers at that particular mercenary camp, at least not a troll Shadow Priest. 
Fly running back with the Skeletal Marksman and the Burning Archer. Yumiko already upgrading this keep as well. Um, upgrading the keep as well. And you can see that the main base is actually rather sparse. A number of buildings, a, no, a number of farms over here. And this really looks more like the expansion than the main base. All right, the Archer is now coming into position here. Burning Archer and the Cold Arrow making it very, very easy to take down one of those footmen. Meanwhile, the Archmage is chasing down after those the Skeletal Marksman and the Burning Archer once more, and it looks like some more cold damage could be added. Another Footman will end up falling for Yumiko as Fly is has now uh, pretty much taken the lead in terms of number of kills. Um, the only thing going for Fly right now is the fact that he has a higher level Blade Master than his opponent's Archmage, and he is at Stronghold already. I'm looking for the Shadow Hunter. There he is, already on the map, full of items. Meanwhile, the Archmage still sitting at level two, and he has the economic advantage, at, even though he is a bit behind in terms of tech. He doesn't have that secondary hero yet, as Fly should be setting up an expansion here in just a second. And what that and that will end up evening things even further as Fly will catch up economically. All right, Archmage is down over here. Not quite sure what he's doing. I thought I saw something. Yes, um, the Furbolg Tracker now trying to come in here. And the Archmage does get to level 3. Is he going to perhaps try and use invisibility some way, shape, or form? He does drop a level 2 Water Elemental here as the Blade Master attempting to take down a peasant and gets a rather easy kill. All right. The Archmage still sitting off here. This is still a rather strange spot for him to be. There is a level 6 Elder Sasquatch sitting right here in the woods. And you have to be extremely careful as, oh, the Shadow Hunter is going to get spotted here. What is going on? Yumiko was hoping to steal that level 6 creep camp and ends up not being able to do so as he now tries to put pressure on the Great Hall. All right, Great Hall going to be taking a fair bit of damage, but one Water Elemental already gone as the Shadow Hunter gets a quick hex off on the Archmage. All right, flies Great Hall down to 200 some odd hit points as another hex goes down. This is going to hurt tremendously as Yumiko is not going to maintain the economic advantage he needs in order to not fall behind. Blade Master chasing after that Archmage. Archmage used the, the potion of invisibility at the right moment and will be able to escape, but I am not sure what Yumiko's long term strategy is. He's now setting up an arcane vault. He is not getting a secondary hero yet. He does have triple guard towers and now setting up dual arcane sanctums inside his base. So far, Fly is doing a great job making sure that he is punishing his opponent while getting back into the swing of things, economically speaking. That level 3 Blade Master and level 2 Shadow Hunter will be difficult for a lone Archmage to combat. Meanwhile, and the Archmage is sitting, I believe, on a decent sized bank. Yes, 1400 gold. He's been saving up gold for about a full minute. And it's going to be only be a matter of time before he is able to, excuse me, before he explodes into low upkeep. Now, the big issue here is that he did end up spotting that sentry ward, and he knows that the Blade Master knows exactly where he is. He perhaps should have placed down the Dust of Appearance first, cleared out the sentry ward before summoning that Water Elemental, as this Water Elemental will not be doing much, if anything at all. Yumiko is setting up his third Arcane Sanctum now. So triple Arcane Sanctums to combat the Orc Army triple casters. And as long as the Archmage gets to at least level 4 within the next um, 2 minutes or so, those casters will be strong. If he ends up falling behind even further in terms of the hero advantage, Fly should be able to simply walk over his opponent unless Fly gets completely caught off guard. Blade Master sitting at level 4, you see the Mountain King now being added as the Archmage looking to clear up this level 6 Sasquatch and there are also the Trents here. Alright, Sasquatch going to get taken down, Tome of Strength plus 2 and Wand of Illusion and oh, it is going to get stolen I believe by uh, actually, I don't know who if it was stolen or not, as the Blade Master may end up getting surrounded. Oh my goodness! Oh, the Blade Master! How? Oh, it uses the, it used a wand of mana stealing 
in order to gain enough mana in order to win walk and escape. That was a huge, huge play there. Fly actually lucking out with the wand of mana stealing and very, very strong micro there. It was not something I expected to see at all. Blademaster picking up a potion of lesser invulnerability. Maybe going after some of or maybe going after the tracker. And yes, oh yes, he did go after the tracker, but he did not be he was not able to do very much with it. Also, a, a windwalk now used as the blade master is able to get away. Archmage, no more charges of dust of appearance. Mountain King just buys a fresh pack. But that Blade Master has already safely retreated back in order to continue more creeping. Shadow Hunter sitting at three, Blade Master sitting at four, as the Renegade Wizard of this mercenary camp will get taken out. Now, this is a little bit of a point to note. This creep camp does have poison, so all of these units are actually taking a bit of damage over time. That does affect things just a bit as the Mountain King now may come in here. All right, are we going to see a hex? No, Stormbolt onto the Blademaster. Blademaster, however, has plenty of potions to stay alive. Mountain King uses the Potion of Invulnerability, and I do believe that to be a bit premature. The Mountain King has full 15 seconds of invulnerability. Some might have argued to just lose the level 1 Mountain King, as the Mountain King at level 1 um, re or resurrects rather quickly. Arcane Sanctum, showing that we are sitting at 69 over 84 supply. Meanwhile, Fly is sitting at 69 over 70. Both players with an, an expansion at this point, so we are pretty much neck and neck in terms of tech and in terms of um, economy. The big difference though is the experience. Level 4, level 3 compared to I believe a level 3 and a level 1. And this is so far looking to be pretty much a repeat of game number 1. Alright, unsuspecting troll witch doctor getting trolled in the woods. Gonna get taken down right there as we're looking at uh, what Fly trying to do a little bit here. Blade Master coming in with Wand of Illusions to try and perhaps disrupt um, disrupt the entire gameplay. Yumiko now should know. Actually, no, I don't know if these have the Sentry Wards. It doesn't look like it as that is a lot of Guard Towers. Sorceress now looking to pull back here and in the entirety of Fly's army is currently slowed. Militia now being brought to the fight as well as the Blade Master Illusions still absorbing a bit of damage. Finally taken out here as we now have Demolishers starting to launch their boulders perhaps towards these Sorceress. Both sides losing a good amount of units and if there is, yes, a scroll of healing on Fly, Fly can use the Spirit Link to the best of his ability and keep more units alive. One Grunt does get taken down there though as the Guard Towers don't look like they will complete. Fly in serious trouble as the Scroll of Healing does go off. You can see the Spellbreaker now running back off to the north here. As Yumiko still doing a bit of massive repairs. Alright, Mountain King getting transferred the Scroll of Town Portal. And it looks like it will be able to survive ever so barely. As this Guard Tower is going to end up getting taken down. Spirit Link was stolen by... Um, the Spellbreakers to keep some of these Peasants alive, but now the Peasants are just going to feed the experience of the Blade Master of Fly, giving him level 5. A level 5 Blade Master, a level 4 Shadow Hunter, going up against a level 3 Archmage and a level 2 Mountain King. Things are not looking good for Yumiko at all, and he really needs to um, have a couple of good engagements for this, uh, for this game to even begin to swing his way. 73 over 80 supply for Fly. Yumiko sitting at 63 over 84. This is not looking good at all. As you can see, the Sentry Wards really keeping track of Yumiko's movements and really expensive uh, to just constantly use those Dust of Appearance to try and make sure that you are not going to get um, creep jacked and ganked every moment. Mortar Team, Spellbreakers, Sorceress, uh, I only one or two priests in this group as the Archmage and the Mountain King are desperately trying to level up. All right, Blade Master is right behind and without the sentry or the magic sentry, the scout tower does not reveal. All right, the Elder Shaman dealing a bit or now trying to make its way in. Lightning Shield now comes in. The tracker may get taken down. No, not taken down at all as the Mountain King perhaps waiting on. Oh, 
Oh, who could no Archmage gets the kill there. Mountain King, dust of appearance. And are we gonna see that Blade Master get taken out? Oh, this might be extremely close here. The lightning shield actually may be dealing a little bit of damage as the Mountain King may be able to get off a storm bolt. That would be extremely close. And wow, a potion of invulnerability used at just the right moment. And Fly dodges a bit of a bullet as he gets a healing wave to stay alive and fight another day. Meanwhile, Arcane Tower fighting over the hedge there as we are looking at a battle already taking place. Blizzard now being used, a quick ensnare, and nice use of the brush by Yumiko as the Yumiko's Archmage is now in a bit of trouble. All right, more and more Blizzard being cast and raining down here. And with the guard towers here, this is actually looking like an okay fight for Yumiko. This is perhaps the best fight he can look for as the guard towers are doing a fair bit of damage. Archmage now in a little bit of trouble, maybe forced to try and run once more, use Blizzard. And that Blizzard should start to take a bit of an effect on all of these units here. However, a boulder from the rock golem of Fly now stunning the Archmage. If the Archmage didn't have enough t um, enough problems trying to channel against all of those raiders, he now has to deal with a magic immune rock golem. All right, Grunt easily taken down there. Mountain King currently sitting at level two, not yet quite at level three. You can see there are scout towers all across the map, but without that magic sentry, the arcane uh, researchable at the arcane sanctum it's not going to amount to very much not quite sure why we see so many ivory towers on the map if yumiko is not going to even research the magic sentry as we're looking at this summoned unit still alive and perhaps waiting to do a little bit more creeping there is an orange creep camp here a 533 which could give level five excuse me the shadow hunter is already at five so the Blade Master and Shadow Hunter both sitting at level 5 looking to just walk over Yumiko's army. Yumiko is still sitting at level 3 and level or level 4 and level 2 right now. So a combined hero level of 10 combined compared to a combined hero level of 6 that is going to spell a bit of a problem especially considering that it is not a level 3 level 3 but a level 4 and level 2. Blizzard once again raining down here. You can see that the Bandit Lord is going to get taken out pretty easily um, after the Divine Shield. Mountain King gets to level 3 and the Mountain King is going to be able to do a bit more and we also see a Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead I would normally say is a very very good item except for one problem. Oh Flare now used. Blade Master has been spotted. And oh, what is that siphon life coming in from the Maiden of Pain? And the Blade Master gets an invisible, or sorry, gets a, um, does not, or does not get the kill as an invisibility is cast at just the right moment. Maiden of Pain quickly, quickly storm bolted as the um, other the creeps are still being brought over. All right, um, Mountain King picks up a gem of health, a big, big item there. As we see the Nether Drake now slowly making its way back to the Fountain of Power as the Raiders finish off a guard tower here. The Demolishers looking to continue this strong, strong push. I'm not sure where they're going to be going next. Meanwhile, the Mortar Team is healing back up and the Mortar Teams with Flare have really been the saving and factor here in this fight as the blade master is constantly revealed demolisher is now being used in order to take down this position in here the guard towers freely pelting down the raiders and the grunts are now trying to push down this here all right blizzard now being brought in are we going to perhaps see a storm bolt as no no storm bolt coming in and the raiders pretty much didn't like what they saw at all they did not want to stay in position and yumiko is still in a fairly okay spot Yes, he did end up losing one farm, and he is being forced to repair this town hall now, but he is still sitting on a good amount of gold and is now upgrading to castle. Meanwhile, his opponent, Fly, is setting up another expansion here on the bottom right-hand side of the map, as the Blade Master has been uncomfortably sitting at level 5 for the past couple of minutes. This is giving time to Yumiko to really level up. You can see level 4, level 3, almost level 5 on Yumiko's Archmage. And once that Archmage gets to level 5, level 3 Blizzard really causes a bit of problems. Even if 
um, and then snare goes down, that blizzard can really deal uh, maybe four to five waves um, by the time the the ensnare goes down, which equates to 200 to 250 damage. Ring of Protection plus two as the Rogue now taking a bit of damage. There is a Flare there, and the Blade Master is currently revealed. Are we going to see a Stormbolt? Yes, we are. And the Mountain King may pick up the Ring of Protection, and yes, kind of going to run away with it. All right. Um, mortar teams unable to really hit their targets as that Blade Master does move surprisingly quickly. And the Demolishers are now trying to get in the position once more. One, two upgrades on the Demolishers. Meanwhile, the Spellbreakers are not upgraded at all. The Mortar teams, however, however are upgraded to zero. At those two zero upgrades, the, the Grunts, the Spirit Walkers, and the Kodo Bees will be taking significant amounts of damage. The big problem now, however, is that Fly is sitting at high upkeep. So even with the additional base right now, he is mining. Uh, he is he is mining uh, only s just slightly more gold than his opponent. Seven gold a second compared to eight is the difference. Blade Master now heading back down to the bottom left. You can take a look here. Fly still mining and is sitting at high upkeep. 90 over 100. Meanwhile, 88. No, wow. All of a sudden, Yumiko now goes into high upkeep as well as he needs to win this next fight. Mountain King looking to buy his time. That Mountain King sitting on 1,300 hit points. That Archmage sitting on 625. I don't know which target I would be more concerned about taking damage. And if you, that Mountain King still had a Ring of Protection plus two, that would be a lot of effective hit points on a Mountain King with five armor. Scroll of Healing being picked up instead as we're looking at the Archmage perhaps making a bit of a push here. A quick flare reveals, reveals where exactly Fly is and the Demolishers are just simply attacking the ground and using burning oil to take down all of this mining here. No more mining will be possible as Yumiko loses some peasants. This is going to be a very painful, this is a very painful spot for him to be in as the guard towers themselves are taking damage as well. All right. Um, guard tower taking damage it will get taken down meanwhile back over here you can see that the archmage is attempting to take down this nether drake by itself there is a flying machine right there there's a storm bolt and the nether drake is still fighting and still taking a little bit more damage sorcerer is going to be doing its extra part there as the mountain king has full mana the sorceresses have full mana and the sorceresses have polymorph that is a big deal polymorph on Yumiko's army or from Yumiko's army could mean a whole bunch of or the Kodo beast could get polymorphed the grunts could get polymorphed and so could those spirit walkers mortar team's gonna quickly take down the great hall there it goes and what is happening next all right cloak of shadows being left behind paladin sitting at level one and this is just a perfect place to try and sit and regenerate hit points. With the help of this Fountain of Power regenerating hit points and mana, this is going to be a very, very interesting fight. Fly pretty much maxed out on, um, on hit points and mana as well. Both sides sitting on very large armies, 90 over 100 compared to 89 over 96. And this next fight could be key. Militia now being called back here and Snare goes down as the Mountain King is going to try and lead the charge here. All right, Spiritling already being brought over. And are we going to perhaps see a Thunderclap? No Thunderclap yet as all the Mortar Teams or sorry, the Spellbreakers taking far too much damage. Mortar Teams attempting to take down a Kodo Beast. The Kodo Beast could fall. There is a Blizzard now being brought over and still no Ensnare. So that is a significant amount of damage. Finally, the Ensnare does go down as the Mountain King is still in the midst of this fight. Mountain King also has a Potion of Mana as he drops another Thunderclap amidst the Sea of Units. All right, all the Casters are now trying to retreat again. Blade Master is still trying to get into position here as the Paladin now in a bit of trouble. Paladin now getting surrounded, but the Paladin does have Spirit Link, saving him from a bit of damage as the Blade Master now going after the Archmage. Priest now stays alive here, and the Blade Master is in actually a really, really strange spot. Stormbolt onto the Blade Master. Blade Master could get taken down. He does get taken down, and the Blade Master falls at level 5. At this point, I would not be surprised if Fly backs off purposefully 
in order to try and resurrect. Meanwhile, the Demolisher are going to get taken down there. A huge snipe on a very, very expensive unit. And all of these units are slowed. Fly now in serious trouble as he does not have that much DPS. The uh, Shadow Hunter now being forced to uh, just use the Scroll of Town Portal as he is able to escape. And that may have been the lucky break that Yumiko needs. He's going to be able to head over to the Fountain of Power if he wants to get more mana, get more hit points, and get back into the next fight. Archmage now getting a Pyrrupt of Vitality, Mountain King himself sitting at 1200 hit points even without a Pyrrupt of Vitality. And we are looking at one base economy versus one base. Blade Master attempting to get away and will be able to do exactly that also has a potion of greater healing and a scroll of healing as well as the paladin sits at level two all right healing wave onto the blade master but the blade master does not have that much mana raiders now coming in from the north and this is going to be a complete surround a very very difficult spot to fight as the mortar teams are trying to reposition all right a huge blizzard now hitting all of the raiders as the raiders are not able to ensnare the the archmage archmage getting a full round of blizzard and that is going to really take down many of these units another round of blizzard goes down and Fly not bothering to ensnare the Archmage until now. That could be the death of him. Another Scroll of Healing goes off, but not before another Raider pops. As all of the Mortar teams and all of the Blizzard is turning things around, Fly is in serious, serious trouble as he is losing unit after unit after unit. There is another heal coming in, but it may not matter as the Archmage is still full on hit points and has a fair bit of mana. Mountain King could come in with another Stormbolt here. Archmage still alive here. He doesn't really even need to run around as another round of Blizzard takes down two more Raiders. Blade Master trying to chase, unable to do so. Grunt is currently polymorphed, and this fight, which looks so good for Fly moments ago, now in favor of Yumiko, as Yumiko, I believe, has evened up the series. And what a great comeback by Yumiko. Yumiko showing that it's not over until it's over. Blade Master should use the Potion of Invulnerability. There it goes, but he may end up getting surrounded anyways. Oh, this is going to be extremely close. Mountain King does not have enough mana for a Stormbolt. Doesn't need it though, as the Blade Master quickly buys a Potion of, of mana and uses it in order to get away. All right, Voodoo Lounge. Now going to get taken out. You can see Inner Fire now available on the Priest. And the Archmage with that level 3 Blizzard raining down shards of ice to give him the victory. I think with this base now gone, it is 0 bases to 0 bases. Standing Army 60 over 96 compared to 44 over 90. And with that said, the Mountain King... As long as that Mountain King has mana, I don't believe that Blade Master stands much of a chance. One priest really caught out of position there. And um, yeah, not quite sure what he was thinking at all as the Blade Master now quickly runs on in. There you go, going straight after the Mortar Team. This is the last hurrah by Fly. Will he be able to do enough damage? The Blade Master does not have enough mana for Blade Storm, if, even if he gets a kill here, as the Archmage now running off to the north. All right, Paladin could get off another Holy Light onto the Mortar Team. Does not bother. Blade Master now gets up to level 6, but doesn't have mana. I believe that is going to be the GG here as the Mountain King could get off a Stormbolt. There it is. There's the Blizzard. And that is the GG. Fly losing game number 2. And if you actually had a chart for how much, um, how much experience and the overall score throughout the game... I am sure Fly was leading Yumiko, Yumiko by leaps and bounds at some point. But really, losing that Blade Master in that fight was the beginning of the end. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game two. Please stay tuned for game number three. I'm going to need probably an additional day to cast it. But I hope you guys enjoy it when I cast it um, later today or maybe perhaps tomorrow.